are all controller instrument things that I uh, designed and co-designed and built. And that's one of the things I'll talk to you a little bit more about. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think pedals were necessarily the best control interface for guitar effects. So for Moldover 2.0, um, I kind of automated them. I had those buttons on the Mojo that change um, points in the arrangement, you know, and I also had some like automation that would flow through the arrangement. Um, it would change the effects on the guitar. So it would go from clean to distortion when the chorus came around, like automatically. And part of why I did that is I didn't think audiences appreciated what was going on with pedals. I'm really fascinated by what does my audience understand, and like, how can I make uh, the technology I use in performance more transparent for audiences of all kinds, not just the tech heads? Uh, yeah, so I got rid of pedals and I was using an automation system, and then eventually that got kind of boring, you know, because I could do all this crazy improvised stuff with effects on the Mojo, but my guitar effects were kind of like pre-baked, so to speak. So that led to this idea, and this idea began with like, let me just like just Velcro something to a regular guitar, hook it up to Ableton, map some effects, and see if it's cool or not. And so similar to like I did a show in San Francisco to kind of test out the concept, and I thought it was really cool. Um, and one of, the, one of the ideas I came up with was, um, it's challenging because there's so many guitar effects, and they've all been kind of like done to death. Ah, but changing the interface, being able to play those effects with your hands, that was the thing I discovered, right? So you've probably heard this uh, pitch shifting or whammy pedal effect before, right? <laughs> Do that by rocking your forth back and foot back and forth on a on a pedal like and I simply do it with the joystick which isn't too innovative up uh, or down but what was really cool was when I started using buttons to go to different intervals and I played around with a whole bunch of different systems and came up with this system I'm using these four buttons to go to four different intervals uh, and higher intervals take precedence over lower intervals so you can go up through these perfect intervals, as such. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, and the cool thing about that precedence thing, you don't even understand these, these words or whatever the heck I'm trying to say, is it's just like the way frets work on a string, right? Like when you play a higher note. It takes precedent over the lower one. So if you're a guitar player and you've ever done any of the tapping, you know, two-hand tapping things that, that we do because we want to sound awesome. <laughs> that kind of stuff. That you've already got that technique built in your hands and your muscle memory. And that was what made it, uh, what made it link, was the combination of a, a guitar technique that I already knew and uh, playing an effect in a way that I'd never heard played before. So you could do things like... one note because you can get a little more interesting when you change the note. You just tap notes with your left hand. sounds were just awesome, especially that like Nintendo kind of sound, and uh, <laughs> that's what sold me on this concept before I spent all the time it took to design the whole instrument. And other things I thought were really awesome were using motion sensors to control effects, like I did in that song, that's my walk. Too. So, motion sensors are fun. And then just combining it all. So I doing that first song, I did like a little, like hold a harmonic to get some sustain. Filter it. And then mess with the pitch. Kick in the joystick. And it's just really fun. It's like, crazy weird stuff that your hands kind of already know how to do, and um, yeah, and this turned me into a little bit of a guitar hero that I always thought I should be. <laughs> I chose the end, 
That's your who's how. That's your who's when. That's your who's now. Right to my lover. I wonder if mother and all of my friends will miss me next year. Who keep my home? Who keep my dogs? Who keep my memory when I let go? Yeah, so version one is about the prototype process. Version one was like regular nice guitar with some stuff velcro to it. Quickest way to test out the concepts. Version two was take like a cheap guitar I don't care so much about, saw off the bottom half. I did, I did experiment a little bit with like, oh, maybe I'll put controls up here, you know, there's Again, the question like with the microphone, like where exactly you put the, the new augmented stuff. Um, and I decided down here is where I wanted all the stuff, so I chopped off the bottom half of a cheap guitar and then I mixed it with a homemade uh, control panel. And, um, and that's how I kind of put together, that was a really compelling instrument to play. That's where it's like the effects and the interface and the, the ergonomics that I'm talking about, how it works for guitar players like kind of intuitively. That stuff all came together and I showed that to my friend Ben Lurie, who has a shop in Oakley, California, and makes these amazing custom guitars for rock stars. And he was super impressed. He was like, wow, this is like a very cool instrument you've designed here. And there was some precedent for moldover instruments as a like boutique uh, product, if you will. And he was like, we should make guitars together. So we kind of revamped that design, designed this instrument, and these are all made from scratch in Ben's shop in Oakland. And he makes uh, copies of them, just like I make copies of the logo. And, and they're fine handcrafted guitar. That's your who's in, that's your who's out, that's your who's when, that's your who's now, and that's your who's in, that's your who's out, that's your who's when, that's your circuit board why not put a circuit on it so we came up with this really simple uh, synthesizer circuit uh, battery powered put a little speaker on there and what's fun about it is it's light reactive so you can uh, make it a noise so I'll, cry it. I'll plug it in a second uh, and then wave it around and the light however the light hits these two light sensors changes the sound <laughs> uh, yeah you plug it in and get more, get more bass. <laughs> The beautiful music comes out of this thing every time I pick it up. Yeah, and this became like a viral success um, of the ilk of that uh, that first, you know, Moldovers approaching controllers and video. But the cool thing is that I had like a CD to sell at the end of it, um, and so yeah, my first uh, CD. Uh, our first album actually made a lot of money from selling physical uh, merchandise, which I never thought it would, and that was great because I financed projects like the Mojo and some of my early jam boxes, which I can talk about later. Um, but yeah, so this uh, was such a big success that when it came time to do this new record, I was like, I should really uh, revisit that idea. I didn't want to make CDs, so I think USB drives are pretty convenient. So, um, but I wanted the thing not to look like a USB drive. Like, the USB drive to me does not say, like, I contain music and you should buy me a show. Um, but cassettes do. So I decided to make a circuit board that looks like a cassette and has a little flip out USB drive on it, which contains the album when you stick it in your computer. And the rest of it is a circuit 
I call the voice crusher. Um, well, I'll just start this one plugged in so it'll be a little more impressive than the built-in speaker. And it's got a little microphone and a super lo-fi pitch shifter. Me. <laughs> 